Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about frequencies. How does a cluttered space work against our internal or external environments? What are lower and higher frequencies? What can you do to support yourself in raising your frequency? Let's continue our month focusing on the holidays. Are you ready to clear your clutter and share your gifts with the world? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join me on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out as I teach you how to navigate the waters to declutter your life, get organized, and become more mindful. I'm an award-winning professional organizer, author, and certified life coach, and I destroy the box and examine clutter in all areas. Every episode, I'll give you take action steps that you can easily apply to your life. Come on, let's get started. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful time with food, family, and friends. I'll be cooking Thanksgiving dinner for the first time in a while. We're having family, so wish me luck. I've never cooked a turkey before. Remember, do not go nuts the day after Thanksgiving. Don't go crazy with Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Do your research. Make sure it's a good bargain. Don't forget to reference the previous podcast on tips for staying safe when shopping online. Breathe. If you think you're going to go nuts, get into a fight with someone, buy a ton of stuff. Just breathe and center yourself. I have interviewed with today's guest on her podcast. And if you listen to the podcast regularly, you would have heard the interview. I believe it was a year ago, last November, when I included and had my month where I interview on other podcasts and share those with you. I'm doing another interview with her. So look for that in the future. I love Tanya because we are on the same wavelength about stuff. She speaks my language. She says things a little bit differently than I do, and hopefully that will allow you to gain some aha moments and some insights. As the executive director of Superpower Experts, Tanya Dawn Reckla spends her days convincing people superpowers are real and recruiting other powerful mutants. During her career as a government special agent, she explored the human psyche, honed her superpowers, and cracked the code of enlightened self-actualization. Tanya continues as a lifelong student of energy manipulation, transmutation, clair senses, intentional molecular creation, etc. She believes everyone has the power to create a multidimensional existence and master the human experience. As I mentioned a moment ago, I've had the pleasure of interviewing on Tanya's podcast, and I said, you know, we've got to have you on, and I'm going to use her words exactly about what we're talking about today. I'm really excited about the subject. One of the reasons I love to have guests on is for someone to share information from a different perspective, and you might hear it said in a different way that gives you that aha moment. So we're going to be talking about the relationship between working against the mind in a cluttered space, in other words, a lower frequency, versus working with the mind in a clear space, a Mm. higher frequency. Welcome, Tanya. Hello. Thank you so much. So let's get started. How does a cluttered space work against our mind? Oh my goodness. It's so interesting. So whether we're talking about a cluttered space externally or whether we're talking about a cluttered space internally, it doesn't matter. Like the, my belief is that what we see in our external external environment simply reflects what's in our internal environment. And the way I like to equate it to people, it's like, it's like, imagine trying to operate throughout the day and you're carrying like a huge bag of like rocks and you're just carrying them around with you, right? You're not going to move as quickly. You're not going to be able to be as agile, as flexible. Um, and it's kind of cumbersome. You know, your focus is going to be on carrying the rocks versus the opportunities that are coming up for you. And a lot of people get that with um, physical clutter, but 
okay, not everybody even gets that with physical clutter, but some people can make that connection. But the internal clutter is um, the more challenging one because not everyone can see that kind of energy or they can't sense it. And so what we do is we attune people so they can sense it and we keep them in those higher frequencies enough so that they can tell when they're not there. How do we know if our space is cluttered or if we're in a lower frequency, for example, because right. different people are going to have different thresholds for this because I get asked all the time, how much is too much clutter, whether it's physically, is it normal for me to have monkey mind maybe 10% of the time or is that too much? So how do we know? Well, I think those are two separate questions. So one question is how much, you know, and, and that, that's a very personal thing. My bias is I like to, to operate at the highest efficiency possible. So I'm kind of like one of those superhuman geek kind of people, you know, like, like if there's a threshold, I'm going to bust through it. And so for me, none of it's enough. Like I can, I can't tolerate any of it. Like I'm not interested in any limitation. And so my guidance to the people that I attract people that work with me in that level is if you can see it and identify it, it, it's there to be integrated and moved. Because when we can't see it, when we can't identify it, it's probably not time yet for us to deal with it. And so, so it's kind of a natural process if you go about it that way. How do you know? Uh, this is easier. So if people have ever um, prayed and, and heard God's voice or meditated and felt connected to oneness, or for some people, it's, I don't know, magic or plant medicines or whatever it might be for them where they knew in that moment they felt chills or they felt connection or they felt something. All of us have at least one example of a time when we knew that we were part of something much bigger. And when you can remind people of what it felt like in that moment and, and you knew, you knew who you were, you knew what you were here for, you knew all that stuff. Maybe it wasn't a conscious thought but you just knew somehow you sensed it. So I like to use that as the gauge for people. Like anything that's not that is lower frequency for you. It's pretty simple, but, but we, we don't realize that we can actually live in that, that we can embody that. And so part of it is, is getting people to go into that space more and more and more and more. And it creates what I call the tipping point to where it's so uncomfortable for you to go back into the alternative that you do whatever it takes to not do that and to stay in that higher frequency. Oh, I have lots of stuff. Oh my gosh, I'm too excited here. <laughs> One thing that I've learned, I call it expansiveness. Like I've just mm -hmm. been getting into essential oils recently and I sniffed this one. I'm using surrender and release. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. Like I felt expanded and I knew, wow, that, on energetic, that was powerful to feel that. Another thing that you mentioned, I have two things I want to touch on. The first, that it's a process. Because I know working with a coach, doing my women's group where I do all my spiritual work is that there was something I know I couldn't have heard. My coach said to me the other day, you couldn't have heard this a year ago. Mm, beautiful. And so understanding and embracing it's a process instead of feeling like, oh my gosh, it took me a year. Well, I wasn't ready. And I had to clear mm. that clutter where I could get to that. So talk about your thoughts a little bit about the process. Well, I think it's, it's twofold. So, so on one level, I like to remind people that sometimes it's not even just about our own internal process. It can be timing and universal timing. And so, you know, when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with people or in groups or with our membership base, it's, there's a lot, a lot of times information comes through that says we weren't ready. So our knowingness will go ahead and, and give us glimpses. I call it the dangle, like the universe <laughs> dangles, like, Hey, this is what's coming just to keep, keep us going on the treadmill. Right. And, um, it, but sometimes it, it just isn't time for that to come into fruition. A lot of times, simultaneously, there's internal work happening as well. Um, I've come to really appreciate the process. I, I, I tell people to look at it like courtship. Like you're, you're uncovering aspects of yourself that you will never again have another first moment with that piece of you, right? It's like dating. And, and, and the more you do this consciously and, and in full awareness, the more you really appreciate every nuance that you discover about yourself. And it's, it's like meeting a new best friend every time. Um, but the other piece of it, in the beginning, I, I was really irritated with the fact that there was a process early on. And I didn't like the fact that some element was at play that was like keeping me from total awareness instantaneously. And I felt like that was like a, a, a cruel joke. That I can tell you and, and, and all the listeners that sitting where I'm sitting now, um, some of the levels of awareness that I've come into 
there's a very, very good reason why it's a process and why we go through it um, slowly. And uh, some people say why we wake up slowly. There are aspects of how we exist and where we exist that our minds literally can't comprehend. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it, it would, I think we would literally implode from the inside out if, if we jumped right into it. And it happened again here recently. I was, I was getting comfortable in the space I was embodying. And of course, I was shown a new space of awareness. And it was so overwhelming that in that moment, I could honestly say I was so incredibly grateful for the journey, for the process, and for the methodical um, steps of waking up. And, 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 I, and I gave a little a pair of, prayer of gratitude that I'd gotten to the place where I could appreciate that. And, and really, I mean, because we're talking about spaces where your world literally disappears in front of you. I think I said literally about a thousand times on this call alone, but the, where, where the world disappears as you know it. And there are pieces of us that we, we, we need to ease them into that. So, so when I say honor that process, I mean on, on so many levels. I always used to joke that I wanted the Eckhart Tolle special where I'd have a night of darkness and mm -hmm. then wake up woke or enlightened or whatever word you want to use. And that was probably four or five years ago. I used to joke about that a lot. But now I'm like, you know what? I'm good with my process. I'm good. I'm convinced that I probably, my brain probably would have exploded. I mm -hmm. truly believe that. For sure. And I would imagine, and, and I, don't, I don't know Eckhart, I don't, we're not friends or anything. We don't communicate often. But it's the, I would imagine he would even admit to the fact that that was just the beginning. That was just another level. And there's so much unveiling that continues to happen. Um, that, that it really is mind-blowing. I wanted to touch on one other thing when we were taught, when you first started this, that I'm finding is true, is that your comfort level changes. Once you've mm -hmm. been expanded, I was talking to my coach, and you know, I, I feel there's such value having a coach, mentor, whatever yeah. group of people to discuss things with, to, to share all this. And I was frustrated with a friend because I'm like, they're negative all the time. And she's like, you've moved on. And then, and that was just a simple thing, but I was like, I'm frustrated. How do I handle this? Or, yeah. and I didn't have, I needed someone else to say, Hey, it's okay. And that, you know, you can't, you can't be around people that are negative all the time. I just can't physically, mm -hmm. spiritually, mentally want to do that. So understand as you change and you, you do become uncomfortable. Right. I talk about it in terms of frequencies. And when you up level your frequency, you don't exist there anymore. And so, but energy seeks to balance itself. And, and as long as you have recollection of having been in that frequency, it's easy. It's much easier for you to get pulled down into that frequency than it is for you to raise everybody up into it. That's a big part of why Superpower Net exists. Um, through the, that's the membership base through Superpower Experts is because um, so many people that we work with are here to have a huge impact on the world. But the problem is, is that when you start coming back down off the mountain to do the work in the world, um, you find yourself combated by a lot of lower frequency aspects. Well, that's where you're going to do your work. It's the idea of being in the world, but not of it. And, and you, you need support, um, vibrational support, energetic support, um, emotional support, all of that, that has to be there. And so, so that's what the net provides. Um, it's, it's not like the support that you get walking up your mountain. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's totally different process as you move into doing your work in a big way in the world. And I agree with the whole expansive theory. We call it cellular confidence. So our cells and our body literally, literally, they have a meaning, uh, uh, an understanding of how the world works. They, they all have a, a story. And so as you're going through this process, you're rewriting those stories for every aspect of your beingness. And um, one of the powerful concepts I'm working on here recently is the art of disbelief. And so it's really being willing to harness the power of saying that I know how something appears, staring it straight in the face and denying its existence. Um, and that, that's a big hindrance because our five senses, our typical um, basic five senses will tell us one thing, but as we hone our superpowers and our predisposed superpowers like mind reading and psychic ability and empathy and all these other things, we're getting different information and they're contradictory. And so how, which one wins? Like which one's more real? And it's recognizing they're all real. They're just real in different frequencies. And so which frequency do you want to operate in? And of course, my bias is I always want to operate in the highest frequency, you know, but, but that's not everybody. Different people choose that's to do different pass. things. Yeah. 
you overwhelmed each holiday season? Do you try and stay organized but can't keep up with it all? Would you like to reduce your stress during the holidays instead of having it grow? My proven coaching, training, decluttering, and organizing tips can get you where you need to be quickly. Check out my class in MP3 or video format. How to get organized, reduce stress, and stay sane during the holiday season. Topics covered include organizing for the holidays, clearing clutter in all areas, including post-holidays, using technology to reduce holiday stress, and going green to save time and money. Go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com under the Life Organization tab where you'll see classes. So do you do anything to clear a space, like a physical space that you're a fan of doing or your inner space? Are there any rituals or things that you personally like to do to keep that? Um, not anymore. Frequency. No, it's pretty constant at this stage. Like I'm, I'm pretty connected to source in just about all things. Um, occasionally I'll dive back into my bag of tricks and pull one out. Um, a lot of times, one of the things is, is if you can change your physical body in some way, I'm reading um, Psycho Cybernetics, uh, the plastic surgeon who realized that when he changed people's faces, it changed their personality. Um, and so one of the things that I really resonate with there is that when you can alter your body, so if you're sitting and you feel yourself kind of sinking into a lower frequency, stand up. Um, one of the things that I did is like I raised my eyebrows like up, 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 you know, um, that that's for the, the raising the frequency for um, expansion and, and clutter to declutter. What I noticed for a while was stuff was like collecting on me. And I was like, and so I started going, <laughs> and my husband was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm getting it off of me. Just get off, you know, and, 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 it, and that's part of the attunement process. So we walk people through mastering your personal power attuning your individual resonance, and then honing your superpowers. Part of the attunement process is getting so sensitive to those subtle differences and frequencies that you know when it's not your highest. And so when you start to feel that, you're like, it's, it's like you said, you can't really be around negative people. It's, it's so intolerable, um, the, the frequency, the energy that comes on you. Um, and so I have a, a ton of little tips and tricks for, for ways to manage um, cognitive triggers, emotional triggers, vibrational triggers. Um, but a lot of it is, is not waiting until you feel like being in that higher frequency. It's doing something so that you will feel like doing it. And so, so it's flipped, you know, and these higher frequencies, it's like, it feels like opposite day, like everything's backward. Mm -hmm. um, so, so where you used to plan to get to a goal before, it's like now you, you, you kind of see the goal and you just walk, even though you don't have a plan. Um, you know, there's all kinds of ways that it's, that you feel like you're kind of in a fun house when you start playing in this stuff. Um, but, but the biggest one for the vibration things is to alter your physical existence, even when it's the last thing you feel like doing laugh, just start mm -hmm. laughing. That changes it almost instantly. Help someone else. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I kind of have a rule that if I go lay down at night and think, have I touched someone's life today? And if the answer is no, which is never anymore. But when I started off, if the answer was no, I didn't go to sleep until I did that. And it may just be a text message. Hey, I love you. I'm thinking about you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, hey, you popped into my heart. Like, what, what, you know, how are things going? Somehow, some way, touching somebody's life shifts that. Absolutely. And I love that you just talk about a simple things like a text checking in with someone. I think mm -hmm. sometimes our society gets caught up in what I call the Oprah moment. You get a car, you get a car, you get a car. And it has to be this huge thing. And that, if that's not true. Yeah, not at all. I mean, the little things have such a huge impact. Think what? about, think about what impacts your life. I mean, think about, I mean, we, we, we don't have any issue being like, Oh my gosh, that meant so much to me when you did that. But for some reason we don't flip it and go, well, then the transverse should be true that if I do that for someone else, they might feel that way also, you know, and of course we don't do it for that purpose. We simply do it out of, you know, the graciousness of, of our own existence. But, um, but we just don't think that way for some, like, I, I think, I think it has to do with our false humility and our mm -hmm. ideas about, you know, well, we're not that, or how could we possibly have an impact? And it's just foolishness. What would you say to someone who is struggling right now, whether they've got a lot of physical clutter, they're overwhelmed, they feel like I'm a mess mentally, emotionally, spiritually. What advice would you have for them? I would say find someone who can uphold that vision of who you are. 
Um, the, the other thing is too, is this goes back to the doing something even when you don't feel like it. Um, that's a big part of the reason why we do our podcast is it, we are attuning people in the podcast. So yes, the information is great and our guests are phenomenal, but it's a really great way to connect with a higher vibration. It is a very rare occasion for me where I start talking with somebody, they don't feel better. Um, and so those, those people exist in the world. If you don't know those people in your inner circle, listen to the podcast, use me, whatever it takes to remind yourself who you are. Pray. If you're, you know, if you believe in God or prayer, meditate, chant, whatever your beliefs are, connect to something bigger than who you are in that moment and, and allow it to remind you of who you are. Um, you've just forgotten, you know, what, whatever you're struggling with, that's just the story. That's just the overlay. Um, go, go above that. Expand out. What Julie's talking about is huge. We worked with my daughter's seven. She's a host of Superpower Kids. Um, it's her own podcast. But when she was younger, we were teaching her expansion, and it was such an abstract concept. And so I just told her to imagine herself hugging the earth. You know, with, with my adult clients, it's like, get big. Allow your energy body. And when we talk about expansion, folks, we mean literally get big. Like, allow your energy body to be bigger than yourself, bigger than the house, bigger than, and get galactic. Like, imagine you're this constellation yeah. body up there. And you, you can't hold on to low frequencies and negativity if you expand out. It's too spacious. Um, now, recognize there are some aspects of us that are in complete opposition to that, and they're not going to want you to expand out because as long as they stay constricted, they get to survive. They get to have their stories, and they get to be right in their misery. Um, so, so you have to be willing to override those pieces. That brings up a really interesting point. I, in my experience, when... I've changed, shifted, raised my vibration that either the people in my life rise up or they go away. Mm -hmm. Has that been your experience? Okay. I, I frame it a little bit different. So my experience is when you, when you, when you raise a frequency, you're meeting the people who choose to associate in that frequency there. Some of the people, you know, will choose to associate with that aspect of themselves. And some people will surprise you. You, you, and, and I stopped pre-qualifying people a very long time ago because I recognized that I had a story that, well, I can't speak in my truth because those people can't hear it. They can't hear it. Well, really all I was saying was where I associate with those people, this information isn't, isn't true there. But I don't know if those people are operating in these higher frequencies um, in awareness. Um, we're, we're, we're all in all of them. I mean, let's be clear. Um, but, but not everyone wants to associate with that aspect of themselves. And, and I found that that was saying more about me than it was about them. And so I stopped pre-qualifying and I speak from that abstract frequency um, everywhere all the time. I, I don't um, prostitute myself, if you will, for anybody's lower frequency aspects. I, I'm not interested in that. And when I stopped pre-qualifying, I was surprised at how many people really were existing there. And then, of course, I embodied the abstract frequency and that's, we're all there. I meet everybody in that space, yeah. whether they're consciously aware of it or not. They certainly are in my presence, but um, whether they maintain that outside of my presence, I, you know, I don't know, but, but I, but I see everybody there. Yeah, that's fantastic. I would not say I'm there yet, but that's okay. I mean, I work on myself daily. I was talking to someone else uh, about this. I was talking about, I've had to take a step back, not from business, but mm -hmm. personally from social media, because I can't. It's just nuts out there. And so, <laughs> it's like you know, the wild, wild west. <laughs> it's the wild, wild west. And it's kind of like with the negative person. I can't be around all of that anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's not my job to force you to change. I wouldn't force anyone yeah. to change. It's, you know, you will meet, do whenever it's your time or not. You're, you know, we're all on the spiral. Yeah. And there's no right or wrong with that. And so wherever you are, you are. And I'm going to choose to keep. 95% of the time, keep raising the vibration and going up on the spiral. But I have found, at least for me, it's, you know, it's a continual process right. and being aware in every moment, like not flipping off someone when they cut me off in traffic, because that would have been the automatic response. And, you know, so many times we're on autopilot, stop, no, bless them and be on their way. Whatever's yes. going on, it has nothing to do with you. Absolutely. And I, and I would predict that you'll circle back around to it. it. Usually I find, you know, social media is a really great indicator of where people are sitting, um, not necessarily vibrationally, but, but when we shift up into a frequency, it's very uncomfortable. And so 
So as you settle into that new frequency, a lot of times you can't be exposed to other people and other things, especially um, especially those that sit in the vibration you just left. It's like it's like magnets. You know, the closer magnets get that are opposite, like they 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 repel so much stronger the closer they get. And so when you just leave a frequency, it's the most abrasive thing. Um, most people don't recognize that in their marriages and in their parenting and everything else, but we do it. Like, like there, there were times in my growth where I looked at my husband, like, who are you? Like, how did you, what are we doing here? How did you get here? Well, and over time I was like, okay, am I, am I just crazy? You know, what's the problem here? And then it dawned on me that every time I shifted into a new frequency, the first feeling is elation. Like, oh my God, oh, look at this, this is possible. But then as I go through doing the work of moving all my pieces and parts up, it was highly uncomfortable because those pieces and parts are super uncomfortable with change. And so in those moments, I kind of retreat and go internal and like, I couldn't deal with anybody or anything that wasn't what I was working on. And then as you get settled in that new frequency, you open up again and like, oh yeah, everything's great again. I love everyone again. Oh yeah, I'm posting all over the place. Love the world. And then you do this over and over and over and over again. Um, that's one of the biggest challenges to entrepreneurs because it's difficult to maintain your outreach when you really don't want to talk to anybody. And so one of the reasons why we work in collaboration at Superpower Experts is it gives everybody the opportunity to um, have their space and their expansion at different moments because the entity itself maintains a steady pace. Um, but it's super challenging for solopreneurs. I, I, I can't tell you how many folks I advise and coach who really, really struggle with that. And when you don't feel like being out there in the world, it, your, your business suffers. And so, so we work with people on how to structure in such a way so that doesn't have to happen. Now, I'm all about awareness plus action equals change. So what take actions would you suggest for people listening today? Um, it, 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 it kind of depends on their goal. But initially, it's as, as much as you can get very, very, very real with yourself. Most people spend a lot of times lying to themselves. So when those stories come up, when the aspects come up, be willing to say, but is that true? You know, and, and associate with that observer role, with that higher aspect of yourself. Um, I, I tell people, imagine you've got like a throne in the middle of your body. And that's your, that's your um, sovereign's throne. So whether you associate with a king or queen archetype, you know, but that's where you're, for me, that's where my queen sits. And as long as my queen is sitting on her throne, everybody is calm and okay. You know, everybody kind of submits. I listen to their concerns and we, you know, all my people. And it's like, okay, I understand that you think we're all going to die. Is that true? You know, and I can be this benevolent queen kind of figure. When I come off my throne, everybody goes nuts. Like everybody goes crazy. The world's coming to an end. Da, 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 da. They're fighting for control. Everybody wants to sit on the throne, but none of them are really devised to do that. They're not designed to do that. And so that's the best thing you could do. And it's kind of just sit on your throne, listen to all the stories like, okay, I get it. We don't have enough money. Nobody loves us. Our business sucks. Da, 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 da. I'm an imposter, whatever the stories might be. And then be willing to say, but is that truth? Or is that just a cover story for a deeper fear? And what's the deeper fear? And, and, and if we're willing to look that deep, you know, you can only go as high and expansive out as you're willing to go deep, then, then, then now you're starting to create a much more solid and healthy relationship with self. I love that. And you're the only second person I've ever, I always can call her my sovereign self. So it's interesting. Oh, beautiful. Sovereign because most people say higher, but I've gotten out of the 99% of the time, good, bad, black, white, yeah. that sort of thing. Now, sometimes I, cause I like the superpower thing. I, I call it the super self. <laughs> super self. There you go. I love that. Is there anything else before you share with us how we can learn more about you that you felt I didn't ask or that you like to share with people? Mm, I just like to remind everybody that you, you are so much more than you realize. And, and whatever we can do to support you in remembering that we're happy to do that. Make sure that you're surrounding yourself with people who hold that vision for you when when you forget and if people make you feel small like don't like just don't what you know they're probably playing a role for you so look at within yourself why am i asking them to perpetuate that right now where do i feel small and address that piece of you from your benevolent throne and then move on but surround yourself with the people who know who you are and are willing to support you in that and love you and everything else and and it it, it really is that easy um, and, and if you don't have anyone in your existence, contact us and, and we're happy to help. You are the company you keep. I really believe that. 
I Absolutely. Really that. As a big shift for me is when I got married, I really sifted out after that because I'm in a great mm-hmm. relationship. I value this. I, don't, I, I won't tolerate it more in the past when I'm like, eh, well, you're not that great, but oh, well. Mm-mm. Yeah. Could you, could you feel fulfilled and whole unto yourself? And it's, it's really magnificent. So Yes. Now tell us how can people find out more information or whatever good stuff you'd like to share. Absolutely. Go to superpowerexperts.com. We have all kinds of fun whatnot there. The podcast are hosted there. We're, we're launching new shows. We're launching Sex, Love, and Superpowers. Um, we're going to launch Superpowers of the Soul. We're launching a Spanish show and a Reawakening Men show. So really excited. Plus, we, we currently have uh, my show and then our, our daughter's Superpower Kids. So it's a lot of fun over there. If you're interested in the membership base and you, and you want to get connected and supported and loved in that capacity, you can click on the net tab and um, you'll know, you'll trust yourself if it resonates. And it, our people always hear a solid yes immediately. This isn't, you know, no sales pitch necessary. You know if it feels good for you. And so feel free to come and join us there if, if that feels like a good fit for you. Outstanding. Well, thank you for sharing your light today. Oh, absolutely. One more thing. It feels like if you feel like you want to dive into this deeper and you, that abstract frequency calls on you and, and you want to work more closely with me, just check out the programs page. You can schedule time with me there. I think that that's going to answer some questions for some folks. Fantastic. All right. Well, absolutely. thank you. Oh, thank you, Julie. I love what you're doing in the world. I really honor that and I appreciate you. Thank you. Right back at you. Thank you. On our next episode, we are talking about creating a self-care plan. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Are you ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Sign up for our newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and receive a free copy of 10 Steps to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would love it if you would rate and review the show because it really helps us in the search ranking. See you next Tuesday at one o'clock. Remember, when you clear your clutter, you can create the life you desire.